The sun is shining, so we're talking solar PV. Welcome to the Everything Electric Show. We've had lots of requests from our audience about where to start when it comes to solar PV. So today, we're going to go through a few things that I would consider before starting a project like this. So why would you install solar PV in the first place? Well, it can help cut your carbon footprint and lower your emissions. Also, it can help you save money on your energy bills. And finally, any excess PV production you have, you can store that in your storage battery, into your smart hot water cylinder, even into your EV charger, and anything left after that can go straight into the grid. Let's think about how much space you're going to need. How big is your roof? Do you have dormer windows? Do you have Volox windows? Do you have things like chimneys which may be in the way? What direction is your roof facing? South, southeast, southwest is always the best ones to use. Is your roof shaded by things such as other buildings or trees? If it is, you may need to consider installing optimizers to your solar array. In layman's terms, optimizers work a little bit how, I guess, fairy lights work. If one bulb goes, then the rest of the row goes. Whereas if you install optimizers to your solar panel, it can bypass that poor performing panel and allow the others to perform properly. Next, you need to consider if your roof can take the load. Solar can be heavy and there are things you need to consider such as building construction, what type of tiles you have, also things such as the age of the property. Some properties are built on non-standard construction, and in those cases, you may need to get a structural surveyor in to make sure the roof is safe. But don't worry, if you don't have a normal sized roof and you have a flat roof, you can still put solar on those. You can buy lots of pre-made brackets for them to sit on, as well as tubs. Don't forget the fully charged live events in 2023 featuring the Home Energy Advice Team where you can have a one-on-one -on -one session with an expert to go through your future plans. Make sure you book your session as soon as you arrive as the heat experts are very popular. We've created a downloadable PDF for you to fill out and help with your planning so don't forget to bring it along with you. We'll put a link in the description below. Access is also a very important thing to consider. You'll need to get access for scaffolding. And at this point, it'd be a good chance to see if your roof's in good repair, so you can make the most of your scaffolding, as it's an expensive part of the project. If your house is listed or in an area of outstanding natural beauty, you may need to get plan permission, but your local council can help advise you further on this. There are a few different ways you can install solar panels. One of the most popular ways is the on-roof system, which is where rails are installed on top of your existing roof, and then your panels are mounted on top. You can also have in-roof systems where some of the tiles are removed from the roof and then a tray is fitted. The solar panels are then fitted into the tray and are quite flush with the tiles on the roof. You can also get solar tiles, but those are on the more expensive side. If your roof isn't suitable for solar, you can think about having the ground mounted option, though you will probably need to get plan permission for this. We've done an episode on ground mounted solar before. We'll put a link down below for you to click on. How much solar should you consider getting? You should always look at your energy bill first to see how much you actually use, and then look at your solar design to see how much you can actually produce. Your installer will always give you the best outcome for your property. You'll also need to have space for your inverter, and your inverters can vary in size, and that's basically just a big smart box which is going to convert your DC electricity into AC electricity so your house can use it. You're also going to need to consider things such as the DNO. In some cases, you may have a solar array which is quite large and you may need to get permission from a DNO beforehand. This can take sometimes up to 12 weeks, so always bear that into consideration when it comes to timescales. When finding an installer, you should always look out for MCS accredited installers. You can find those on the MCS website. You can also use places such as Trustpilot to have a look at reviews of their work they've done before. Also, word of mouth is a good way of finding a good installer. And remember, always get three quotes so you can see which one offers the best for you. Although the feed-in tariff has ended, you can still get the Smart Export Guarantee. And you can find all the information for this on the DirectGov website. And also, solar benefits from 0% VAT. Well, I hope that's given you a good overview of what to consider before you install your solar PV system. And if you ever have any doubts, your contractor are always there to help you step by step through your process. Do like, subscribe and comment to the Everything Electric show. And as always, if you have been, thanks for watching.